The great part about black and white color grading is that it's so easy. All you have to do is drop the saturation and not worry about the colors. Or maybe there's more to it. Hey guys, Nathan here. Now I'm gonna be honest, growing up, I always thought modern black and white movies were a bit of a cop out because I knew about Clerks and how they had a very small budget. So they went black and white because they weren't able to fix their white balance because they just shot on a bunch of different lights using different color temperatures and tints. And I thought that was the case for all other modern movies shot in black and white. Turns out I was dead wrong. And in addition to there being a bunch of reasons you may wanna shoot in black and white, there's also a bunch of different ways you can do it in post. But before we get into that, don't forget to hit like and get subscribed to this channel for lots more content like this. Anyway, let's get into it. So here we are in Resolve, and I just have a clip from the music video Misery by the artist Problematic, directed by Ryan McCarvel. And I helped produce that and colored it. And this was shot on a Panasonic GH5. So to get out of Vlog and into Rec. 709, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna go in and grab the Panasonic Vlog to 709, toss that on at the end there. Now we have a nice Rec. 709 color space, which is just a great place to kind of start from. So now how do we get a grayscale image? Well, if we think about it simply, we have Y RGB, and what we wanna do is just get rid of the RGB and be left with the Y, right? Well, typically when I wanna increase colors, I'll boost the saturation, so what if I take it down? Well, it works, and this is a perfectly valid way of getting a grayscale image. It just has some limitations that I'll get into later. So bing, bang, boom, you're done, right? Well, no, there's a lot more that you can do. You can still do elements of exposure control, like for example, let's bring down our shadows, let's really bring up our highlights to make him stand out from the background there. Let's actually go into our lift, bring it down a little bit, make everything a little bit darker. And then maybe we can go in and kind of click edible splines, soft clip, the higher end. And you can also experiment with different blending modes. So there's lots of different ways that you can get different looks out of just a black and white grade. But it doesn't stop there. You can actually use color in black and white to achieve a different look. And I'm not talking about the Schindler's List effect where you have one color that kind of pops out, but if you want to learn how to do that, tutorial up here. But I'm actually talking about having black and white as your output and using a different RGB input to get a different look. For example, let's look at the movie The Lighthouse. It's a period piece set in the late 1800s and they really wanted to recreate the film looks of the time. Now, film back then was orthochromatic, which is a fancy way of saying it doesn't see the color red. But the thing is, no one makes orthochromatic film anymore. So to replicate this effect, they decided to use opposite of red, cyan, as glass filters that go over the lens. So how can we replicate something like that in post in Resolve? So going over to a new shot, this first node is to just kind of get the exposure under control a little bit. So we're gonna add a new node and we're gonna add in that nice cyan color. Okay, great. Now. We'll take in the next node and let's bring the saturation all the way down. Now let's see if we see a change. Turn it off, turn it on again, no change. But the curves is also governed by the luminance mix. So let's take the luminance mix all the way down. Okay, we see a change in the sense that it gets darker, but that's all we're really seeing. So if we reset the node grade, we can, let's say, try it in the offset bars. So if you didn't know, the offset sliders are not impacted by the luminance mix, but again, all we're getting is just a little bit darker. I think we can get a different look, and the way we're gonna do that is by going into the RGB mixer. So let's get rid of this node here, and let us go into the RGB mixer. Well, you see that it has the red, the green, and the blue outputs. So let's say I take the red output down, we get that nice cyan color. But that's not totally what we want to do. What we want to go in is we want to click monochrome. Now what that's doing is it's not outputting red, green, and blue values, but they still have an impact and I can show you. So let's take the red output and bring that down quite a bit. Now we notice that the red channel is not getting displayed as much. So if we look here on our skin, it starts to get very dark or very bright when we increase it. Now, this is quite a different from the output that we were seeing with the saturation method. So you can have lots of fun adjusting the different 
channels and how much is in each to get different looks, but this also tells us something else. If we're changing the RGB values of what is coming into this node, that means that the color before this node is actually important. And let me demonstrate that. So now I have two versions of the same clip and I'll show that to you by going into split screen. And if you wanna learn more about versions, you can check that out right up here. So these are identical. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this clip and I'm going to adjust the temperature. Let's bring the temp color temperature all the way down to 4000. So if we turn off the monochrome effect, you can see things are pretty blue, right? Now, this can cause a problem. And if we go into this other clip just to show, turn off the monochrome effect, not blue at all. So now where this can cause a problem is, let's say we're gonna go into monochrome and we're going to adjust one of our channels. Let's bring down the blue output all the way. So now we see quite a shift on this one. Now, if we go over to the other one where the white balance has been adjusted and we bring it all the way down, we notice quite a different change. And as you can imagine, this is gonna cause you quite a bit of trouble if you wanna create a consistent look throughout the film that you're grading. If your white balance isn't set right, your results are gonna be totally different. <laughs> and it'll create a lot more work for you. So if you make sure to balance your node in the beginning, even when working in black and white, it can save you a lot of time. Anyway guys, that's it for today. And I hope this really gets you started with black and white color grading and gets you pointed in the right direction. And if you wanna learn more, I always leave the links to my sources down in the description so you can check that out. And anyway, yeah, be sure to hit the like button and get subscribed for lots more content like this. Anyway, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye. Also, I should say that the decision to go black and white should really be made before you shoot anything because it can really have a big impact on composition. Something that can look nice with a bunch of different colors may not look as good when you're just in black and white and you're left somewhere between light and dark. You have to play with contrast a lot more and because of that, something that can look awesome in color may fall a little flat in black and white. So it's definitely a good thing to go in knowing that you're going to produce something black and white. Anyway.